We listen to a lot of advice. We listen to many lectures. We listen to many people speaking to us. We know what is right and wrong in most cases. But sometimes shaitan comes to us and makes us either delay in terms of procrastination or sometimes he makes us disregard the importance of a matter so we do not change in that regard or sometimes he makes us such that we leave without remembering what was said and sometimes we change our lives for a few days then we go back to where we were and sometimes we say that I will change tomorrow or the next day and then by that time everything is watered down so the pieces of advice that come to us from a religious perspective they are definitely sourced in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given to us through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah created us and he sent for us revelation we have anbiya we have ulama we have people who in our midst continue reminding us about what is right and wrong and we should know and realize that whatever Allah has revealed and sent down, it is applicable in my life and yours. And it will be such that when I listen to it carefully, it seems that I am the one being addressed. Because Allah knows my life and He knows yours. He knows my weaknesses, He knows yours. He knows what issues I am going through and He knows what issues you are going through. So He knows absolutely everything such that when someone gets up to talk to us or when we listen to a program on radio or elsewhere or we read a book, many times it will seem as though the person is addressing me. But sometimes they don't know the problems you have. They don't know the issues you are going through. But they are only mentioning what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed and in it, there is a reminder for myself and yourselves in my life and in yours such that I'm going through issues that are so relevant and what is being said is helping me. So these are different types of reactions. But the worst reaction, the worst reaction is he or she whom when he is told what is right and wrong, he becomes angry and he becomes upset and he becomes more entrenched in the sin he is committing and he defies to say who do you think you are to tell me Allah says such people such hypocrites when they are told to fear Allah they become more entrenched in that sin and they become more powerful and defiant to say, who are you to have told me what to do? Who do you think you are? So Allah says, if that is the reaction, such people sufficient for them is hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. So from this we learn one very interesting point. How do we treat advice that comes to us? Number one, someone will tell you, okay, brothers and sisters, let's read our salah. Let's make sure we read five salah. Salah is the fifth pillar of Islam or the second pillar of Islam. And salah is so important through it. Inshallah, you will achieve this and you will achieve that. So we all know about salah. People do not feel offended sometimes, even if they are not so strong in fulfilling the salah, because it's a common message. That message is common for everyone. So we will react to it where inshallah one day it will click and we will start reading our salah. One day it will click and we will start reading our salah inshallah. But may Allah make us strong. I mean, then you have an issue of zakah or the issue of psalm and fasting, the issue of hajj and so on. Amazing how these are common points. Then sometimes people will talk about how it is prohibited to drink alcohol. Every one of us knows it's haram to drink alcohol. So the speaker will speak and he will say, brothers and sisters, it is haram to drink alcohol. Intoxicants are haram. This is prohibited. We are not allowed to engage in it. We can't buy it. We can't sell it. We can't transport it. We are not allowed to have any dealings 
that have in it alcohol and intoxicants and so on because of this curse and that curse that also is a common message a day will come when alcoholics will quit also by the will of Allah may Allah strengthen us and let that day be today by the way brothers and sisters you are aware and so am I that any form of, of intoxication totally prohibited in the Sharia Allah wants to protect my mind and yours my body and yours and Allah knows when he has made something prohibited that it is bad for us in one way or another and sometimes in more than one way so it's up to us to learn either the easy way or the hard way the easy way is to learn by the experience of others and their guidance so someone tells you look I've been there I know what it's all about watch out and be careful do not engage in this let's say for example a man was or he came to the Prophet sallallahu young and he sat in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he says, Oh Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now for him, he's addressing the Nabi of Allah. He's so lucky, he's so fortunate that he is talking to the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, Oh Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, give me some advice. Now out of all the advice in the dunya, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him and told him, La taghdab, don't get angry, control your temper. Imagine... A man went to, a young man went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the messenger. Imagine you go to someone and you think, subhanallah, or you know that this person is a top scholar. And you say, please give me some solid advice. And he looks at you and he says, control your temper. And imagine what you think. So this young man says, okay, give me more advice. He says, control your temper, second time. He says, okay, give me more advice. He says, control your temper, third time. Imagine... Meaning, don't get angry. La taghdab actually means do not get angry. In other words, control your temper, watch out. Now, there are two ways of reacting. Someone can say, MashaAllah, this is a golden piece of advice. No matter what, I'm going to force myself not to get angry. I want to stop there for a minute. All of us have some form of a temper. All of us. Some people, their fuse is 20 amps. So no matter what, 30 amps. You put something big, they don't get angry in a rush. But when it blows, boom, it makes a big blow, bang, you know. And they get so angry that all that, it was a waste of time for it having been 30 amps. Other people, 2 amps, 1 amp. You just look at them and what are you looking at? You know, <laughs> that type of attitude. So this is the type of, different people have different temperaments. They have different points of boiling. And some people, they'll get angry after a long time and in 2 minutes they're back cool as a cucumber once again. My brothers and sisters, without working hard on forcing yourself to extinguish your anger, you are not going to be able to help yourself. You have a temper? Well, so do I. You're not working on it? Well, we do. Subhanallah. So much so, I give you an example. I was driving today. And earlier on in the day, I overtook someone. And the car that was coming was at a great distance, very far. And he started hooting. And he started flashing. And he started pulling signs. And he started getting excited. And yet I had already tucked well into the lane half a kilometer before he crossed. And I could see these signs and he's passing me and making all these piggy signs and whatever else. If it was a few years ago, perhaps I might have decided to turn my car back and go and fix the man up. Believe me, what is he getting excited for? But after you simmer down and you force yourself to laugh at it and to say, Alhamdulillah, people cannot gauge distance. Allah has given us the ability to gauge it. Excuse the man, let him carry on. He's half blind. Carry on. You laugh at it. But wallahi, some people will, their anger will drive them to stop to turn the car around, to fly back next to the guy, to hoot at him, to drive him, push him off the road, to take out a gun, put it at his head and say, what did you do to me? <laughs> but that happens, subhanallah. Even the youngsters understand. If you take a look, that behavior is unacceptable, totally ridiculous, because you caused 20 problems out of an issue that wasn't even a problem. It was a reaction. It was someone else's problem, not even yours. You made it yours. 
So my brothers and sisters, today we are struggling on a community level, on a family level. Husband and wife are suffering, children are suffering. So many people are suffering in our businesses, with our workers, with those whom we work for. Because of this temper, because of the anger that we have. And you know what? If you are not going to force yourself when you are really hot, tell yourself, no, I'm controlling this. And laugh at it and see what happens. You feel calm. Do it 500 times and after that it will become your habit. You become a cool person. And people will say, one year ago this man was so hot-headed. We don't know what happened. It's the consciousness of Allah. You need training. It's not going to come to you automatically. A lot of us have a lot of money, mashallah. A lot of us have everything. Our houses are in order. We do not depend on others besides Allah. But we forget sometimes that we depend on Allah. We forget. Why? Because we've got everything. It's laid, carpet, where's the food? Where's the food? And it must come. That's how it is. And we get angry if it's not there. Two minutes. And the wife is like, what? And she's shaking and shivering. If not the wife, then the cook. And if not the cook, then someone else. So they got delayed. They have a plan B. You know, we tell people, you need to be ready. You tell your children, for example, you need to be ready at two o'clock, we're leaving. Two o'clock, one minute past two, and suddenly we're swearing. What is this? Five past two, half past two, my brother, cancel your trip, but don't get angry. Maybe Allah protected you from some damage further up the line. You might have gone off on your journey two o'clock and something might have struck on the road. Allah says, you, we want you to leave at half past three. You got angry, you're fighting with Allah for nothing, for no reason. You can remind your children to say, look, my children or spouse or whoever it is, Inshallah, next time when we say two, try and make it two. Or you can solve the problem in another way. Where you want to leave at two, but you tell your family, one o'clock, we're going. Believe me, half one, they'll be there, quarter to two. In your mind, we're only going at two. You see? So there are several ways of solving the problem. It requires intellect. It requires, subhanAllah, dedication. You want to solve it, you'll solve it. We prefer to get angry. Angry for what? Who am I to get angry? Allah is the one. He is the owner of anger in the sense that he has the right to get angry upon us because we are the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and still we do not worship him exactly the way he wants. We try and our hope is pegged on the mercy of Allah based on our trial. Don't we agree? We all read Salatul Isha. Who knows whose Salah is accepted? We hope from Allah that he accepted our Salah. I mean, how many of us had 100% concentration in salah? I don't think even one of us. So our hope is pegged on the trial that we have coupled with the mercy of Allah. But he has the right to get angry with us. But still, he shows us his mercy. So this young man says, what is the advice? He was told, don't get angry. I told you the first way, the first way of advice is, or the first way of taking it is to understand it. And to put it into practice, just by being advised by someone, learn by the experiences and the wisdom and the knowledge of others. So they tell you, brother, I'm just warning you, do not do this. So we say, okay, I'm not doing it. Why? I trust what this man is telling me. I'm not doing this. That's one way of learning. The other way of learning is to try it out. And to learn after we are burnt sometimes. And sometimes beyond repay. So now... Say, for example, the anger. Say at your workplace, you become upset, angry. At the back of your head, you know it's haram to get angry. Haram. Meaning to get angry for these minor issues. There is a certain scope of anger, or should I say, uh, you know, a level of temperament that you're allowed perhaps to get to when it comes to certain issues of the deen. But we're talking of the general day-to-day -day items. You don't just get angry. You deal with items. Your children are there as an amana from Allah. They don't belong to you. They actually belong to Allah. But we think they belong to us. My son. That's a statement Allah has allowed you to say. But in essence, he's Allah's creature. Whom Allah is going to take away. Anytime. My son. You, and this is why we say, my husband. My wife. You know what? <laughs> the belonging is to Allah. That's the reality. But for a moment, they are under our, um, our guardianship or an amana given to us only for Allah to take our test. 
So how we treat them, how we handle them, all this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, a man comes and he says, no, I know it's haram, but me, I got a problem. I got a weakness. I, I, my temper, come on, make dua for me. I, I'm very angry. Dua alone, without making an effort, is an insult. Did you hear that? Dua alone. I say, Ya Allah, help me that I don't go to the nightclub, but I'm walking to the club. What are you talking about? I walk, say, Ya Allah, do something to take me away when I'm walking. What is that? You say, Ya Allah, protect my car when your windows are open, everything. Ya Allah, you are Allah. You protect it. I leave it to you. But your doors are open. Everything else. What is that? It's called tawakul. And tawakul is the proper trust in Allah. Tawakkul means to lay your trust in Allah after having done whatever was in your capacity. Then you say, I lay my trust in you. That is called tawakkul. Tawakkalna ala Allah. We lay our complete and full trust in Allah. That's correct. But tawakkul is where you lay your trust in Allah in a false way. In the sense that you don't even play the little role that Allah has made you play or placed on your shoulders and given you the ability to play and then you say Allah will take care of that how you don't try hard and you say Allah will take care so that we need to make sure we mend so if a person in his home say for example says okay I know anger and temper is bad but I've got a problem and I get angry and he was warned watch out you know you get married you need to cool down calm down that spouse of yours there are so many things that would happen negative if you lost your cool. And so we find this person says, no, I don't think it's going to happen to me. And he gets home and he starts screaming at his wife. And he screams at his children. So his children are watching him scream at their mother. Right? And sometimes people become violent. May Allah protect us. And people become, you know, so vocal. They say the dirtiest of words to someone who's dedicated to their life to someone who's perhaps served them more than they actually should according to Islam someone who's given up so much in order to be with them and we lose our cool so badly the children are watching so what we've done we've built a generation of new boys and girls who when they get married they will think marriage is all about screaming and yelling at your spouse that's why my brothers and sisters if the parents of someone who you want to marry scream and shout and swear at one another, expect that person to do the same. Unless Allah has had mercy on them and they've been in the company of someone or some miracle has happened. Why? They will believe that this is how you're supposed to treat your spouse. Daddy used to clap up mommy every other day. So now, you know what? You are my wife. You're the mommy of these kids. Come for your claps. Is that the attitude? If that is the case, we've lost the plot. But where did they learn it from? You didn't talk. You didn't tell them. But what you did showed. You had a temper. So the little children as young as four years old, they've watched their dad lose the cool and say whatever. So that from that age, they start screaming and shouting when dad is not there, by the way. Why? He takes the place of, my, of the father, yet he's only four years old. And the wife tries to explain to the husband, look, this is what your son did. No ways. My son can't do that. But you've been doing it all day. So this is part of the repercussion of that temper and anger. We said you can learn the easy way, eradicate it. Or the hard way is you don't want to learn. You think it's not going to have an effect. It has a deep-rooted effect through perhaps seven generations, going all the way down. And where was the cause? Myself or yourselves. Why? Because we were not interested in learning through the easy way. Putting force on yourself. Fighting your nafs to say, I'm suppressing this anger. I don't want it. It must be gone. And like I said, my brothers and sisters, we all have a temper. All of us. Wallahi, fight it. You do not have to have things your way all the time. No, you don't. You do not have to be a perfectionist. The towel must be sitting there. Three centimeters on that side of the pole and three centimeters on the other side of the pole. If it's not like that, there's going to be chaos here. Come on, my brother. Come on. Even if there's no towel from that day, look at it and go and get a towel. Subhanallah. Even if you happen to drip and slip in the bathroom, by you screaming, what's going to happen? Your bones are not going to get better. You can tell them better. Next time, please put a towel. 
whatever you want to say. Because now you're dealing... But the way we react to things sometimes really is so detrimental to our own well-being that we don't realize you haven't forced yourself yet to become a better person. Becoming a better person is not just, okay, I listened to this lecture and that lecture. I started this talk by saying we listen to so many different pieces of advice. How do we react to it? We don't change a lot of the times or it's temporary. But to change, you have to force yourself. You have to fight yourself to get up for Fajr. It's a war, believe me. It's a battle. You have to force yourself. You have to fight to get to the masjid 10 minutes before the time. Without that, you're going to be a person who will die on your mattress without having gone for Fajr. Why? Because you never made an effort. So when we say an effort is required, what, is that, what does that mean? It means fight your nafs. And fighting your nafs means control yourself, force yourself to do certain things. You know, we tell those who are married that when you are talking to your spouse, you force yourself to say the best words. Force yourself to say the most romantic and beautiful words to your spouses, the most loving words to your children. Force yourself to say them. They need it. Without you fighting yourself to utter those words, it's not going to come. And you know how your household can change so positively just by a few good words? You will be amazed. Try it, and tomorrow morning we'll all be on honeymoon. <laughs> Believe me. It's a reality. Try it. Check. Check what happens. Try it with your kids. Start uttering words of affection. You find they are bonding. They will bond with you so much when they have a problem at school. It's no longer they confiding in their friends who lead them to drugs. They confide in you as a dad. And when they come and tell you the most absurd thing, watch your temper. Because if you blow it, they're never going to talk to you again. You need to deal with it. It's the crisis of the age. Today we are facing bombardment within the environment from all angles. And we as Muslimin have the solutions, but we're not practicing because we don't force ourselves to practice. Force yourselves. May Allah grant me the ability to fight my own nafs and all of us. So that is the difficult way. Then we say, you get angry, another thing happens, your blood boils. So when your blood boils, you suffer blood pressure after a short period of time. But didn't we hear the Prophet ﷺ said, don't get angry? He said it thrice. If we wanted to learn the easy way, we would say, our beloved Muhammad wasallam, the best of creation, the highest of all messengers, the one who was sent to me and you. We are so fortunate to be from his ummah. He said, don't get angry. No chance that I'm going to go against that statement. That's how we should be looking at it. He says, don't get angry. I am his follower. I want paradise. The Quran speaks about the people who will enter paradise. And one of their qualities is, Allahu Akbar. Those who can suppress their anger and forgive people. <coughs> Jannah will be filled with people like those. Filled with people like those who can suppress their anger and forgive people. You know, we need to have an attitude where we tell ourselves, so what? Never mind, it happened. It's okay. Have husnul dhan. Today we have a crisis. You know the meaning of husnul dhan? When you see someone doing something, think of the best, the best possible reason why they did it. Not the worst. Wallahi, society has so much pressure on us. The TV has so much pressure on us. The internet has so much pressure on us. The environment and the surroundings have so much pressure on us that the minute someone does something, automatically we think of the worst reason. Automatically. Yet, we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We utter that statement, but when he says, think of the best possible reason why they did this, we are actually now thinking of the worst possible reason. So we stop talking to people because we believe this man passed me, but he didn't wave at me purposely. That word purposely is what caused the split of a relation. One word. Had we changed the word to say, the man passed me, he didn't greet me, perhaps he didn't see me, there was not going to be a problem. But no, I know he saw me, and I know he ignored me, and I know he's a bad man, and I... So now, community is divided. Why? We have learned from the devil to say, think of the worst. Even if he did ignore you purposely, 
the goodness of your mind would have made you think positive so the crisis would not have continued because now that you greet him and you tell him brother i saw you in town but i'm sure you didn't see me he will think to himself whoa i'd rather just have greeted you we solve the problem so this is why we say there are so many benefits but we don't realize these are the small realities in our lives day to day we experience these things but our lives sometimes upside down we have the wealth we have so many other things but we are leading a life of misery because we don't want to follow these basic teachings of survival in life taught by muhammad sallallahu which makes it an ibadah to follow so like i said that temper what it will do it will make your blood boil. Your blood boils, two, three things happen. One is, you get blood pressure. So now you're on pills. You're on pills, now suddenly you start suffering some other diseases because every pill has a side effect. Then, when the blood boils, we get a migraine. We get hot. Then, sometimes I was so angry, the man says, that I dished out three talaks one time. Like it was biryani at a wedding. <laughs> dished out one way, three servings, all at once. And then, what happened? It's your temper, my brother. You did not cool down. Cool it. You will destroy your life, your family's life. Then we go crying to the ulama and the other scholars. We want to cry here and there. Why? It was just your temper. Did you ever go back to the simple hadith where a man met the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa the best of creation. He met him and says, give me advice. I would have expected a nice long lecture. If you go to someone, uncle, give me advice. You know, some of the uncles, mashallah, they can talk for quite long. They'll give you a long advice. They say, uncle, switch off your advice tomorrow, part two, inshallah. <laughs> and tomorrow we don't see them. But this was short, sweet, sharp, to the point, and relevant to everyone up to the end of time. La taghbar. Don't get angry. Watch out. Your anger. Don't. Someone did something bad to you without getting angry. Retaliate, respond, or see how you want to deal with the crisis. Beautiful way. You don't have to get angry. You get angry, you maltreat people. There was once a man and he got so angry with someone who worked for him who was a muslim that he swore him and he kicked him and he fired him because of a mistake that happened so that man went away and so on and so forth and now this boss one day i met him and he tells me you know what i'm looking for this guy i can't find him i said why he said he was from malawi and you know, I've dreamt about him three times. And he was serving me water on a hot day. And he was greeting me so nicely and he sat with me and he's, you know. And he says, I think that means something. Maybe I was unjust. Anyway, after some time, I happened to ask a few people, who was this guy who was working for this man? It seems like he's looking for him and where is he going? He says, we don't know where he's gone, but I tell you, that man used to wake up for tahajjud every morning. He never used to miss his tahajjud. Every morning. He used to stay with us in that location. And tahajjud time, the man was awake. And he used to cry to Allah in the musalla. So I went back to this original man. And I told him, you know what I heard about this guy who was working for you? This is what I heard. Wallahi, he cried. And he said, I swear by Allah, I'll never let my temper overtake me again after today. And I ask Allah's forgiveness. Perhaps I screamed and I yelled at a, at a wali of Allah, at a friend of Allah without me knowing his status. He says, believe me, today my life is upside down. Ever since that day, I don't know. My family is crumbling. This is happening. My business is going down. Everything is going wrong. Why? Your tongue. How did you react? You were angry. Your anger. What did your anger do? It made you become a person who oppressed someone who was so close to Allah perhaps. That today you've declared yourself an enemy. May Allah protect us. Through what? The tongue. Watch out. Be careful. You don't know the next man next to you. You don't know. So stop pulling signs at him. Stop getting excited. Stop doing things that will result in our own downfall. No. We don't want that. And we need to force ourselves to develop. And that's the moral of tonight. May Allah grant us goodness. When we go home tonight, one thing I just want you to remember. Without forcing yourself... You're not going to achieve anything. Nothing. It doesn't just come for free like that. Sitting and suddenly your temper goes. And you know there's like a chip in your head. Suddenly it's out. Boom. And your temper's gone. No. You will get very vexed. Before you vent it, you must cool it down. Subhanallah. 
They say you phone the fire brigade at the beginning of the fire. You don't watch how lack of the inferno is. And when the building is about to be burned, you say, hey guys, there's a building on fire. That's not how it works. As soon as the thing starts, you phone. And you make sure that they come quick, quick. Why? They, the more it is going to be there for, the more property is going to be destroyed. The same applies with our anger. The longer we leave it without that extinguisher fighting it, the more destruction there is going to be in so many lives, not just one life. Like we said, my life, the people who work with me, the people who talk to me, my health, my money is gone, my happiness is gone, my sleep is gone. When a person is very angry, that night their head throbs and they don't get sleep. Every one of us may know that. When you're very, very angry and vexed, that night you're sitting and you can hear a doom, doom, doom. Your pulse, you can hear it. And you're looking up into the ceiling and perhaps you don't even know what you're thinking about and you're getting more and more angry. So you have to calm down, let things happen. Like I said, even perfectionist behavior. Perfectionist behavior means you want things every time, on time, on this, on that, everything must be this way. That's very good. But when it does not happen that way, how do you react? Not everyone is like you. Everyone is different. Sometimes people can be one minute late. Sometimes people can be, you know, the one day there was an, and this is a true story, I was involved in it. One day there was a big problem in one masjid. They wanted to fire one imam. So they asked me, hey, this imam here, very bad. Say what? He said, you know, he comes late for salah. Imam. This, so I said, okay, when did he come late? So someone told me, you know what? He's an imam for 15 years. One day, the man came two minutes late. So I'm thinking to myself, 15 years, the delay is two minutes. So I asked the, the man who told me that, Sheikh, how, meaning the brother who, who was trying to now fire this imam, that how many salahs have you been late for? He says, that's irrelevant. He's the imam. He's being paid for it. <laughs> said, but 15 years, the man is delayed for one salah, you getting excited. Come on. You keep him because the next salah is going to miss will be after 15 years. So you better keep him. Because now for 15 years you are set again. According to his own record. May Allah grant us goodness. But why we get angry, we get excited and we lose track of how we are thinking. Now a person comes at night and he's looking here, looking at getting more and more. Tomorrow I'm going to do this. I'm going to fix this guy. Tomorrow. The best thing is forgive him and say, Ya Allah, you deal with him. I'm going to sleep. It's over. Wallahi. So this is Islamic counseling of the mind. Where we are trained to think in a specific way. Not according to the movies and according to the TV. No. Where someone does something, you know, like on the, on the TV, what the people are taught. And on the movies, when the husband makes a mistake or the wife makes a mistake, one mistake, it's the end of your marriage. It's over. It's over. It's finished. Why? You get a divorce and you go. Now what happens? Another mistake, a third mistake, a fourth mistake. Then we can talk about it. One mistake in 15 years. Believe me, that's a brilliant track record. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. You look at it as a Muslim. We are not saying don't deal with it. Deal with it, but in a humane way, bearing in mind that you too are a human being. You too have made errors. Perhaps Allah has covered you. Perhaps Allah has not exposed you. So why do we want to deal with it according to how we are trained by today's environment over and above how we are supposed to be trained by Islam? A person makes a mistake, we are supposed to be taught to perhaps rectify the error in a beautiful, respectable manner. All the marriages, listen very carefully, all the marriages that have got together after a crisis are happier than those who have not yet suffered a crisis. You know, if you shed warm tears and you learn to forgive one another and promise that you will both develop correctly and start a new leaf, believe me, the happiness and the bond would probably even be stronger than the first day you got married. Why? Because that's the way that Islam teaches us to think. Yes, if there's a major crisis, marriages do break. And sometimes they break for the right reasons. There's a bit too much oppression on one side and it, it, nothing is being done about it. Then Alhamdulillah, Allah has kept it as a point of mercy. But here we're talking of losing our sleep, becoming angry. 
you know, breaking things and destroying things because we think that that's it, we are the ones. This is difficult. So this is why we say the advice we hear, there will always be pieces of advice that pierce our heart. What does that mean? Like I said, salah, zakah, and so many other things, it's common. We've been hearing about it very regularly. But say, for example, someone is eating interest, and they happen to be an influential person. And this happens in most societies and communities. And then get up, someone gets up and says, brother's interest is haram, you're not supposed to do this, do that. And the man is busy thinking, hey, is he talking about me? Yes, he is. I'm going to fix this guy up. <laughs> now, let's stop there. I am going to fix him up because he's speaking the truth and I don't like it. Did you hear that? That's the reality. I want to fix him up because he's telling me a reality and I don't like it. Who is he to come and tell me? Why? And yet that imam was innocently talking about something in the Quran. And he was innocently mentioning something in the hadith. But because I am guilty and I am doing something totally wrong, I think he is exposing me in the masjid so I'm making sure he's fired before the next salah because I'm the one who pays his salary. I donate to the mosque. That is a sign of rejection from Allah. Why should we think that way? But the reality is, Allah sends to us advice through the tongues of the scholars and other people that will be directly affecting us to say, you, this is your problem. But the imam doesn't know you. He doesn't know your problem, but it will be affecting you in a way that you are convinced in your mind someone told him something. But you don't know it's a miracle of Allah. Allah knows you and he knows he loves you enough to send someone to remind you to say, hang on, enough is enough. Don't get angry. So people don't like direct advice. For example, you have a person and it happens committing adultery openly every other day. So now the imam comes up and he says, look brothers and sisters, adultery is haram and so on. And the hadith says that people will continue to be deserving of the mercy of Allah for as long as they do not commit the sin openly, shamelessly. You know, one is a person is committing adultery, but he's worried. He says, hey, who's going to see me? What's going to happen? You know, so on. So, yeah, very bad, very, very bad. But one who is worse is he who opened his, you know what, this is my chick. Why must I hide her from you guys? It's my girlfriend, come on. I'm not a hypocrite. What you see is what you get. That's a worse attitude. Why? We are encouraging vice. That's the reason why. Other people will see it and say, all right, tomorrow I'll take mine out of the closet also. The other uncle say, I've got three closets. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allah protect us. Why? Because we've now encouraged this type of behavior. So the hadith says that for as long as people are not exposing and shamelessly doing things, there will be hope that the others will also find it difficult to commit a sin. So there is still deservance of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the imam is saying this, the man thinks, did he see me with her or what? I'm going to sort this man out. That attitude is from the devil, straight from shaitan. It shows that we need a lot of counseling to think Islamically. We don't understand the miracle of Allah. It works in my life and yours. Allah knows us personally, completely. He knows every issue in your life and He will send you messages somehow at some stage. He will send it to you. How you react to it depends. And whether or not you get more than one message also depends. This is why when the people of Jahannam, may Allah protect us from Jahannam, will be driven towards hellfire, the gatekeepers of Jahannam will ask them a question. What, was the, what is the question? The question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of it in more than one place in the Quran. In Surah Al-Zumar, towards the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْكُمْ يَتْلُونَ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِ رَبِّكُمْ وَيُنْذِرُونَكُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا These gatekeepers, the angels will say to those who are being driven into hellfire, did messengers and warners not come to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reading the verses of Allah to you, reminding you of this day? And the people will say, 
Yes, they did. But what can we do? We didn't listen. What does this mean? This means Allah sends messages to every one of us. So don't get angry when you hear solid advice. When you want to get angry against a man who is giving you proper advice, perhaps you are living in denial. Perhaps you might be a person who needs help. Perhaps you might be wrong. Perhaps it might be a reaction that will result in your destruction and you don't know. Like I told you, there are people who have told us that after a certain action of ours, our lives have turned upside down. May Allah forgive us all. So we don't want that to happen to us. Sometimes a saint comes to you and you don't know his connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a pious man. And he tells you something that might offend you but it is a reality it is the truth instead of you getting angry and fighting a friend of Allah calm down and make dua for yourself and for him and think carefully and deeply over what he is trying to say what is the message is he right some people today they not only threaten to attack someone who gives them direct advice but they organize gangsters to go and break their bones because what they said was correct but we did not like it who is he to say it well he has on his shoulders a duty and so do all of us to advise and to remind and to continue because it is only through that way that we will all be able to live a life becoming closer and closer to what is correct if i'm not reminded by anyone how can i become correct nobody reminds me like someone told me something a few weeks ago and i told him okay do you want me to get up on the mimba and say my brothers and sisters please gossip there's no harm enjoy it make sure you have good tea around there and enjoy nice biscuits i'm sure the chocolates are also not bad those romani creams are also okay and you guys gossip about everyone and make sure it's about 9900 people a day is that what islam is is that what you want us to say or, or we say you know what you guys backbite no problem accuse people as and when you wish just say anything about anyone soon as you see someone just start accusing them of this and accuse them of that and that's the islamic way of doing things please open your heart and accuse whoever you want is that what you want us to say so now when we say do not accuse people they say who are you to say that well that means you've accused someone that means you are guilty that means you are so guilty that it's irritating you that's the verse i read of the quran that some people they are so hypocritical they don't even know they're hypocritical because they become angry when the truth is uttered they become so upset they become like they want to beat you up because you are speaking the truth so the question i want to end with seeing that now i'm almost clocking my 45 minutes is that which category do we fall into that's what i want you to think about Am I a person who gets upset when someone tells me what's right? Am I a person who gets angry that I want to beat people up when they tell me what pierces but he's correct? Think about it. May Allah make us those who can change. May Allah make us best in our homes. May he make us in society and community such that we can stand up for one another. No matter what color you are, no matter what tribe you belong to, no matter where you come from, you utter the shahada, we will try our best to work with you and we will try our best to support one another. That's what it is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. My brothers and sisters, I am here, as you know, in passing because I'm driving up north. And every time I get caught here in this beautiful city, so nowadays, before I get caught, I actually say, okay, I will come and don't worry, we'll meet up and inshallah, perhaps we'll say a few good words. May Allah grant me the ability to practice upon what I have said. May he make me from amongst those who can control that temper come what may. And may he make us all the same. Believe me, you become a different person. Totally different. But without an effort from you, that change is not going to happen. Even your sicknesses can go. A lot of things can go. Why? You've calmed down. It's the advice. You took it and you forced yourself to become a better person. You know... To greet people doesn't just happen. You have to fight your nerves to greet someone and to smile. A smile requires energy. Wallahi, it requires energy. But the, when the hadith says it's a sadaqah, it means the beautiful effect of that smile is so powerful that no money can buy that. Imagine if we all have to greet. 
You see, the problem is twofold, and I'm going to speak about the other side also. But let's talk about this. When we greet, Assalamu alaikum, my brother, how are you doing? And you know, Alhamdulillah, how's the family? What's happening? And we walk away. You know, the bond we feel makes you feel like coming for the next salah. It makes you feel like you want to be part of the community. But why is it that we're all running away? As soon as we see the doctor, we start feeling sick. As soon as we see the lawyer, we have a case we need to deal with. So in the masjid, the doctor, poor doctor cannot come because everyone says, Hey doc, lucky I saw you here. You know what? I got a pain in my back. Ask the doctors, they'll tell you it's true. The guy who's got a hard way, as soon as we see him, Hey, you know what? I needed the stock man, you know. So this is not salam. Wa alaykum as salam. It's not a smile. You are putting pressure on someone to say, Next time, please stay far from me because me, I ask you for a discount when I see you in the masjid. And I ask you to do the deal. You want the doctor phone his surgery, no matter how close you are, make an appointment and go there on time. If it's something very urgent, perhaps you might want to bypass it. But don't use the platform Allah has given for ibadah to come and now attack a person in a field of his. No ways. No ways. Believe me, it's something important I'm saying. And this affects all of us in our own fields. No matter what you are, you're a, you're a butcher. There's a shortage of me. Hey brother, my fillets, don't forget. But I, I, I'm trying to say Allahu Akbar. And you're telling me my fillets, don't forget. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. So this is why we say we must protect ourselves from treating people in a way that they feel pressured when they see us. They must not feel pressure. When the doctor sees you, Assalamu alaikum, mashallah, wa alaikum, how is it, what's happening? It stops there. Go out there from your mobile phone, phone is surgery, and find out. When can I book? I got a sickness, I got this. May Allah grant us cure. May Allah open our doors. So these are the beautiful ways of Islam, where we can increase the mahabba and the love between us in a way that we feel happy. Smile, but an effort is required. Even if you're feeling gloomy, you know when you're feeling down and upset and you know, you're just like so low, try breaking out into a big smile. The people around you, you will feel good. Believe me, why? It is an ibadah, that's why. Break out into a smile. And you see, your exp- as soon as people see you, they start smiling as well. Because your expression is such that the smile is known for your face, not the frowning. So much so, can I give you a- another tip? This is obviously a tip. Some people, they age very quick, which means they're still 20, but they look like 40. And some people, they, they don't age. One of the secrets, or should I say two of them, one is temper, anger management. Anger makes you old very fast, very, very fast. And two is your expression on your face. When it is more of a frown, you become old very fast. Because you get all these wrinkles on your face and so on. But if you leave your face expressionless or you smile more than you frown, you age far slower than others. Where are all these, you know, beauticians of today? You don't need all that, subhanallah. Makeover at the age of 60. So I want to look like 20. Makeovers, you don't just follow the sunnah. Smile and see. At the age of 60, they say, are you 45? And you say, hey, thanks a lot, man. Jazakallah khair. MashaAllah. Allah bless us all, grant us goodness. We need to smile. We need to make the environment more loving because there's too much hate on the globe and people really are cursing one another. We should help one another, inshallah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here we are about to clock 50 minutes, five minutes over time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, grant us ease and goodness. I've enjoyed my few moments here. Wallahi, what I've said comes from the heart by the will of Allah. And I hope it goes straight through to the heart. And I I have not said anything intentionally to offend anyone. But if anyone felt that way, I hope you're not guilty of what I was saying. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all.